if they don't want him to die, he don't die. So how in the devil can Bill Clinton mama get sick and die? Because Bill Clinton mama knew that that was not her son because he didn't know basic questions from high school. So the next thing you know, they shot the cancer in her because you're dealing with a real deal beast here. You see what I'm saying? Now, go see the movie Dave because it's all about the assassination of that. Bill Mitchell, Bill Clinton. Man with a head full of hair. You understand? Check. All right, now. Two weeks ago, day one came on about a disease called Ebola Zaire. Cooked up in Fort Dietrich, Maryland, same place they created the AIDS virus. Right? Yep. Ebola Zaire cooked up in Fort Dietrich, Maryland, and also connected with the CDC in Atlanta. They said that they had killed a couple of thousand people in Africa with this Ebola Zaire. But yet the monkey got out of the cage in Fort Dietrich, Maryland, and no white people died. But yet they came right in, dog, on Newsweek, 1979, and told you that they got ethnic disease that can kill whatever ethnic race they want to do. Right? Okay? Now, to let you know the cracker is bold, cracker, cracker put out a movie, and if anybody, you, if you want to see something, go see this four-star movie. Outbreak. And when they put out the movie, the movie is dealing with Ebola's eye air with a monkey to get out. You see what I'm saying? And a monkey that gets out. They do everything, they put it in the movies before they make the move. But I'm going to tell you another reason why they're doing these things in a few minutes. Now, another thing that has been a conspiracy is what is messing you up is the reason why you can't have your relationships going is this whole notion of love and romance which is based off of physical attraction and based on pure insanity. You see what I'm saying? The love and romance that you are used to having, oh, you might get that when you first meet a person, you know, all flip, you be all crazy and all that kind of stuff. That's the initial stage. But the way they got this whole love thing with all the songs and stuff, you got a false notion of what love is. So therefore, once you get out of the, the, the you know, that first infatuation, you ready to divorce somebody because the love thing is a part of the conspiracy too. You see, based on this is a commercial society and they sell this whole love romance idea wholesale. You see what I'm saying? When you really look in the particular thing, hey, just like they say in Africa, if you hang around a dog long enough, you learn to love it. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad scenario, but what, a good scenario, but what I'm also saying is this. The, 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 the actual psychological way of what you think love is, is all a part of the reason why your relationships can't get a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? Because you will listen to all these songs on the radio, and I'll be damn, I think with V103, it could be 12 o'clock in the daytime. And they got all this love stuff going on. The reason why they say it, because they took a poll. And because the mate system is gone so doggone haywire where you don't even have no mates with a black woman, they took a poll and she wants to hear a lot of this particular song because in actuality that's a fantasy land. So you living out this doggone song with baby face and all the people and all. And psychologically when you do get with somebody, if it don't go according to what you think is love based on the soap operas and based on these romance books, then you understand why you can't get with a black man. Now. Whole lot of stuff going down. Now, let me explain some things that's dealing with before we get into some real juice. I told you before, now you got to listen real closely to what I'm getting ready to tell you. I told you before that in the 1970s when they talked about all this particular stuff, you had to put it in novels because the government would come in and kill you, right? Okay? You had to put this stuff in novels because the government would come in and kill you. Now all of a sudden, about five years ago, up to now, you got over 40 something books talking about the New World Order. Now let me explain what's going on. It's simple. John Henry Clark tells you a time when the Roman Empire was so bad they had killed so many people in the world until they developed this, res re this reputation. So the people they was, they was weak for about a hundred years and the people didn't know it because they had this reputation of being this mighty force. You understand? And so the people said, you just don't mess with the Roman Empire. But they said it was a group of vandals out of Europe 
that didn't know about the, the, the Roman high priced prostitutes that'll go for any dollar. And that's the key to the whole thing. All we want is, 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 is the money. And in the last days, they say the false prophet will have a spell over you. He got the spell over you because you busy trying to get paid. You see what I'm saying? So the first thing a brother asked me, I asked, some, some brother asked, well, I asked the brother this back in 1988. I said, don't the people have a right to be happy? You know, talking about these niggas up here in college. The brother said, no, we ain't got a right to be happy. Who the hell told you you had, to be ha had the right to be happy when your brothers and sisters is rotting over there in the projects? Long as every brother and sister is there and all of you ain't free from this stuff, none of us got a right to be happy to all of us. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You have no right to say that you are satisfied with America when you know the same brothers and sisters that some of you went to high school with who was not privileged enough to make it with you. You understand what I'm saying? It's catching hell from the man right now. You see what I'm saying? Check. Now, he came back and he, he found this Stella and he found out that this, this particular person is sad on the Stella that the same man that said he's Uncle Akna Kunsu is Osiris, the black god that was supposed to return. Ashutulu. Our soot. We're going into the deep, deep, in a few minutes, we're going to go deeper into this stuff that's getting ready to come back and kill this cracker, point blank. Now, what happened was, what happened was, the reason why it skipped the white man up to this day is because the person who found the tablet, once he found the tablet, he went back home, he got it translated into hieroglyphic, and he went and did a ritual. And when he invoked the ritual in his hotel room in 1904, a tall black man appeared. He said he seemed to be a man, a tall black man in his, thir in his 30s, with the face of an African king. His dress was not Arab, but suggested Assyria. I took note of it, because at that time, Awas, A-I-W-A-S-S, -S -S, was not only an angel that I have seen in visions, but he was my holy God and angel, and he was the God and the devil of Holy Summer. Now don't get spooked out. But he was the impissimus head of AA, of the AA. AA translates silver star, the star system of Sirius, or what is called the great white brotherhood, not white people, because the only people that can be in this brotherhood can only be, be the people that have the crown chakra. And in order to have the crown chakra, you've got to have the black dot on the inside. You see what I'm saying? So this particular black man that he got by setting up this ritual, who is the same man that you see there under the name of Ankhap Nakunsu, an earlier name Osiris, he came as Awas. And when he came as Awas, he gave him a book. He gave him this book called the Book of Law, which is the second version of the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth, a book of coming forth by Day is a book that is the oldest book in the world. You see what I'm saying? 10,000 years in the written word and another 600,000 years in the spoken word. That predates your Bible. It's got the same Christ story, the 147 negative confessions or uh, admirations to, uh, to my yacht that Moses borrowed 10 of them from and gave you the Ten Commandments. The same Christ story who is Heru, his later form is Osiris. It's the same Christ story, same resurrection, the same mother, the same everything you got in your Bible, which is a carbon copy, which is the oldest book in the world, the book of coming forth by day or the book of the dead. Now that book, you can get, get this particular book because this is the best authentic print um, um, type. is the book of the dead and the mysteries of a mentor by Gerald Massey. Remember I told you that you went into the revelation um, period and that's called the Amenta period. That's called hell. You in hell now. But there's a deeper part of hell when you come out of hell. That's the deepest part of the cave. That's like hell week. <laughs> you know? Now, the Book of the Dead by Gerald Massey. This is the one that you want that is the best. Because the Book of the Dead by E. Wallace Budge, Budge only translated hieroglyphics. He could not understand. But this particular person had a person with him when he went into the British Museum. The black, a black woman appeared in the spirit by the, the black woman, the goddess segment. She appeared as a black woman and she told him, number one, that even though he looked white, he was a member of a Druid ancestor that came from ancient black Druids that built Stonehenge, so he was black. But even though he looked white, white enough to enter the British Museum, she told him to write down what he saw when he went in there because most of the Egyptologists was not going to be writing down what they saw. 
And after he got out in 19, after he died in 1907, the white man made sure that they locked down most of the papyrus that actually got the stuff on when you were gods. And they only give you the stuff when you fail. Now, this particular book, the book of law is the second virgin, which they tell you that the Quran is the last prophet of Allah. This is the last prophet of God that came in 1904. The white man knew about this book and held on to it for 90 years. But they say that there will be a time in the book of Revelation that say there will appear a man in heaven that will have a book that no one can understand. And he'll have a name that no one knows. That particular person is the guy that you see on that stellar, Ankh Ap Nakunsu. You'll know him soon. You're getting ready to get real deep. Then they say it's going to be a book that no one can understand. The white people had this for 90 years. They have printed over 300 subsequent books to understand 21 pages of this book. And up to this year, they still don't know the full significance of this book of law. That's why this, and even this book here, the secret ciphers of the UFO knots is this particular person studied for 20 years out of this book that was given by this black man, Ankh Nakunsu, in his form of AWAS in 1904 to Alistair Crawley. You see, now, to let you know this stuff is serious, the complete works and all of the subsequent books is now being held at the University of Houston and Harvard University for further study on this book of law. You see what I'm saying? But in this book of law, it says only the laws of the earth will survive. More of the blacker more means Lord of the earth. It said, don't worry about the filthy ones. We will handle them and they will surely die. It says, damn those who have pity on those filthy ones. Who is the filthy man? The skunk of the planet Earth. The swine. The white man. Right? You know that. He didn't take a bath up until recently. And in Europe, they still don't take baths. That's why perfume was invented. The only reason why they're taking a bath in America is because America is a commercial society that sells soap and washing powder. And so, therefore, it's feasible to take a bath. And they still didn't take a bath that much until they invented the damn shower. And they didn't have to take a bath all the time. That's the filthy, the wretched of the earth, the dregs of humanity, the white man. Check. Check. Yeah. I'm going to stop right here. We need to just think for a minute here. How in the devil a white man can say he's superior, yet everybody that comes in his path he can't get along with? See, to me, if I'm superior, <laughs> I can get along with everybody because I got one up on them. Oh, them just little children. But he can't get along with, not only can he get along with every person on earth, he can't get along with nothing on nature. Kill all the whales. Kill all the doggone, kill all the, all the dolphins. You see, kill all the birds. Kill the damn planet. And not trying to kill the stars. Kill all the air. That's a man that is dialectically opposed to nature and diabolically opposed to nature. Right? Now, he we received the book of law, and uh, the book of law where it says it's going to be a book that no one understands. Up until that time, this is the book. It says it's going to be a person, he's going to have a book that no one can understand. That is this particular person, Ankh Nakunsu, that says it's going to be a man with a name that nobody knows. Well, you know Jesus Christ. So how the hell the man is coming back with a name to know? You know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is gone on. You see? And all it was was Jesus Christ, the story of the, of the Christ was not just these. There were thousands of Christ that had schools to put out Christ. Ain't you gods? You would go to school and after you would graduate school, you would be Christ. You just know the story of one story and he who knows one book knows none. There's no religion higher than true. You see what I'm saying? So that particular Jesus Christ, you got one story and think that story spits the whole world. But even that particular person was a black revolutionary messiah. You see what I'm saying? Talk to me. You see? So now, the original Christ is the God Heru that predates him 10,000 years in the written word and another 600,000 years in the spoken word that is back on the planet the white boys calling the Antichrist. That's Ankh Nakunsu. Now, he said that once he set it up, he got this book along from the guy named Awas. Awas is the same person as Ankh the Kunsu. So when he, and, and also it's a form of Horus, a Heru. So all of Ankh the Kunsu, Heru, Awas is all one and the same. And when he invoked this tall black man, you are seeing it. Then in the 19, then if you look in your book of Revelation, you're going to see the word Philadelphia. In the book of Revelation. Right? Some say that Philadelphia was named after this thing. 
But we know that they were saying that the people that's going to rise up, that the book of Revelation is going to be carried out. They ain't got but one name in the book of Revelation of a city that exists in the world. Even though there's a Philadelphia in Greece, it can't be that because Greece is fallen. There's a Philadelphia. And they said in actuality that the people that will take that out will be the black people, the original custodians of this book, the chosen seed of Israel that will be in the new world, which was the capital of the first new world, Philadelphia. Then in the late 1800s, this particular person, Awas, or Uncle Nakonsu, or the Christ Heru, a person started having a vision by the name of Edward Clement. And Edward Clement painted a picture of this particular person in a long white robe with a sword. And that particular picture is now at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Everybody has seen this picture of this black man in a long white robe with a gold sash and a doggone, and they say the more of Spain, the more it's cheap. Well, he didn't have a model. He had a vision of Awas, or Ankhop Nakonsu, the Christ of that time, or the Christ which with Alistair Crowley had the same vision. He said it was a tall black man in his 30s. His dress was not Arab, but a suggested Assyria. That's all the same thing, or Persia, you see. And he, and he, and he took note of it. Because Awas was an angel that I had seen in visions. When you look at this picture, it's also on, 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 on Poole's book, um, Stanley Poole's book, The Moor in Spain. Uh, some of these people have seen this picture, this tall black man, and you mesmerized by it. Anybody have seen this picture, you've got to look at it twice. That's a picture of Awas, the black god. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Ankhop Nakonsu vowed to return. He said, I am the prince priest of the beast. Now, early in the lecture, I told you there was two beasts. There's a double beast in the book of Revelation. One is the physical manifestation of a government on the planet. The other one is the, the, other one is the, is the primal force of nature. What is nature? A beast. What is nature? A beast. Different animals. But they said that the man, you see the sphinx that sit in the middle of the earth. The reason why they put the head on top of the animal or the lion, they say because everything that the animal can do, when you raise yourself up to God, you can do too. You understand? You can also do too. So he said, I'm the prince priest of the beast, and they're talking about the black dot seed that is in you, which is the beast 666. Now let me go into some science to understand, because you've got to understand what is getting ready to go down with you right now. Y'all all right? Yeah. Am I going too fast for you? Okay. We got a lot to cover. The coffin of this particular god is in the British Museum. I got a picture of the sarcophagus of the coffin in January. Now, let me, let me, now let me go into some, 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 some science on what is getting ready to go down. Look in your Holy Kabbalah, the Kabbalistic letters. One of the names of Jesus, in fact, one of the names of Jesus, in fact, is the number of the B666. Nevertheless, the fact which horrifies most people easily can be verified by anyone who knows the numeral, numer, numerical equivalency of the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet in the Holy Kabbalah, in the Holy Kabbalah, the Hebrew alphabet in the Holy Kabbalah averages up with Jesus. When you look at Jesus' name in the Hebrew letters, and there's a number, every man, every woman is a star, and every number is infinite. And the, the Holy Kabbalah has the Hebrew letters, and it also has the numbers to it. And when you line up the numbers in the Holy Kabbalah to the number of Jesus, it means 666, which is the key to the Bible. Now we go deeper into this. Now, 666 is the number of a man. It's the number of a man which is encoded in our DNA. The key corresponds to 666 in a periodic table of chemistry. This has to do with carbon. Carbon is the basics of the products of what you know as melanin. Melanin, what you know of, is the blackness that's in you. And melanin is a byproduct of the original carbon. And the same carbon that is in the black dot which is in you is in the black holes in space. And in the core of every star is the carbonated atom. You see what I'm saying? Which is inside of you that makes you different from the white man because he does not have it. He's a mutant. So, it says, which has to do with carbon, as known as the elemental number of 12. 
12 times 12 equals 144,000, which is apocalypse, which is a symbolic number that means you. Because it's not just talking about 100, only 144,000 people. Hell, if it was only 144,000 people, like I say, you'd have to go in and invent some niggas to, to fill that thing. But it's a symbolic number that means the chosen seed, a seed, the black dot seed of Israel. Now, it says that the number 12, and it says it had all life on this planet except the mutant, is considered to be carbon-based because, carbon, because the carbon atom is conspicuously present in all living things. The carbonated atom has to do with six electrons, six protons and six neutrons, which is the magnetic force field and the actual collective makeup of the gods of Earth, the atom. Six electrons, six protons, six neutrons, six, six, six. You see what I'm saying? Which is the black dot seed in you. And when you rise up to God, you'll be seven, seven, seven. Seven, 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 the completion, because seven is the holy number. Check. Y'all with me? Y'all with me now? Let's go on a little bit, and let's, let's go on a little bit, and let's deal with a little more things. The beast of Ankhaf Nakansu. Ankhaf Nakansu recorded in that stella, out of the city, out of the ancient empire of Atlantis, which was the last time you were on earth as gods, before you fell. He recorded that there was a stone that came from the star system Sirius and the stone came from Sirius B and that stone was called a sixth stone and that sixth stone was made up of carbon and in that sixth stone they took it and they gave everybody a part of that particular stone that is the actual black carbonated atom of the black dot or the black hole in heaven and that means in actual all you have the same thing that God has in him because you are the children of God that sixth stone. Later on, the planetary representation of the star system Sirius is Saturn. And Saturn became the planetary representation, and all of your other planets came from Saturn. That's why the Dogon had to repolarize Saturn. And Saturn, Saturn is called a black planet. And the makeup of Saturn is black carbon. And the planetary representation of Saturn, you have the, the Kaaba stone is reported to come from Saturn. So when you see the actual the actual Muslims going around the Kaaba stone is representing the black body of God. And since you are black, you are God. Allah, the arm, the leg, the leg, the head, the arm. Allah. You see what I'm saying? Now, that particular, that particular Kaaba, which the white boys told, the white boys went to Mecca and stole a piece of the Kaaba in the early 1900s, went back and actually did some chemical analysis on the carbon and they found out it was pure carbon or pure melanin which is inside of you which is the carbon key component of God the triple blackness of space in the beginning there was blackness you understand what I'm saying now let's go on let me get my notes because I want to deal with a lot of other stuff here he, deal with a lot of other stuff here now Mentu he said that he was Mentu he said that he was the fourth speaker of Mentu. In that particular stella that I gave you, his, the stella of Ankhaf Nakunsu is also identified with the priest of Mentu. Heru or the Christ is, is identified in many different deities. Appear in the Book of Law. That's the Red Book. That's the Red Book. Appear in the Book of Law. Awas is a being who dictated the Book of Law to Crawley in 19. In 1904 is an aspect of Heru or Horus that revealed himself as the inspired speaker of Mentu. But I thought Ankhafa Kansu was the inspired speaker of Mentu. Mentu is a form also of Horus with respect to the planet Mars. That's why when you see the pyramid that they got on Mars and you see the face on Mars, the face on Mars is the face of Heru, the black man that's supposed to be coming back. And that face is on all planets. Because on all planets live black people. The white man says that this is the only planet with life on it. He didn't say that the other planets didn't have life in it. Just like this planet has life in it. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. It has something to do with Mars. Ankhaf the Kunsu is a, also a form of Horus. 
with respect to the moon. The moon means Kunsu. The prophet Mentu, the prophet and the priest of Mentu equals up to Ankh the Kunsu. Now, let's go on. There's something in you called the Holy Blood, Holy Grail. The Holy Grail, if you go and look at the, the movie, uh, you look at the movie, The Last Crusade, Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade. The movie was to get this Holy Grail that Jesus supposedly had drank from. But they went in and got, and you know, they had a whole lot of killing, everything tried to get the, the Grail, and at the end of the movie, everybody killed each other, but Sean Connery took the cup and drank from it. And when he got outside, they said, well, why you didn't get the gold cup? It should be worth millions of dollars. He said, because it wasn't the cup that you're supposed to drink from. It was supposed to be illumination that you're supposed to get. That illumination, the grail, is the black dot seed that is in you. You're going to find some stuff called holy blood, holy grail, right? Now, what is the holy bloodline? The bringer forth of the grail. The grail is the black dot in you. Is the black dot, therefore, that engages as an offering to the terrestrial alien race of humans that change that, that a chance of communication with the Typhonian bloodline. What happened was is you fell from heaven. The Holy Grail gives you the offer or the chance to communicate with the brothers and sisters in heaven. But the Holy Grail is nothing but the black dot seed inside of you. You understand? This is the mystery to the Holy Grail. You're going to hear a lot of books on the Holy Grail and it's supposed to be this cup. They say that Awas or uh, Heru is the cup bearer. Awas and Heru is also a form of the black race and it means that you bear the cup. The cup is the Holy Grail. My cup runneth over with the Holy Bloodline. Now, this particular bloodline equals the black race. The forebearer are the descendants from the great bear Typhon. Typhon. The great bear is in the constellation of Draco, the triple blackness of space. The constellation of Draco, which is the triple blackness of space, has her first son. You see the dragon. That just means the great mother or the great womb. The, 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 the triple blackness of space has her first son in her south gate. Her south gate is her vagina. In that south gate, she has a first son where she has a reflection of herself. And that reflection of herself is the first of all stars, the star system Sirius. You see, the star system Sirius, where you came from. Now, it says, it says that the descendants are from the great bear Typhon, which embodies the type of the royal bloodline or the royal black blood, or the royal black blood. The bearer of the Holy Grail, which is the black dot in you, the black dot, is depicted on a tarot card that is identified with the bringer to the earth of the holy and royal bloodline, which flowers and veins the kingly man. The kingly man is you are the kings and queens of the earth. The kingly man was embodied in the ancient Pharaoh. The Pharaoh only took on an embodiment of God in which you're supposed to be. You see what I'm saying? Pharaoh means house. The black house. Beth means house. Ham comes from the word Cam, which means black. Bethlehem means the black house. The star in Bethlehem, every woman, every Man is a star. There's a black dot seed in you, which is the star. Bethlehem, the star in Bethlehem is you. The sun, not S-O-N, but S-U-N, the Adam, the sun that's inside you, the black dot, is the sun in Bethlehem, which is inside of you. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when I get into the Necronomicon, we'll find out what's coming back and when it's coming back. Check. All right, now. The kingly man, which identifies with transhuman intelligence. Babylon, the word Babylon, or the scarlet woman, is collects the grail between her thighs. And the blood of Christ is the chosen seed of Israel. Israel, Isis, which is the mother. Ra, which is the son. And El, which means the word child, and it means the word son, and it means the word God. El means you. You are the El. You are the first Elohim that came to this planet. The chosen seed of Israel. The seed is the black dot seed that is in you. So you are all chosen. You are God's chosen people. The white Jew can't be no doggone chosen person because he don't have the, the chosen seed. The word ham means black. Comes from the word cam. Later on, the, the word H was, 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 was 
The word H was substituted for S, which means Sam, which is the root for Semitic. You are the Semitic people. Semitic just means black people. How the damn Jew, the white fake Jew that was inverted, converted into Jew, Judaism in Spain can be the real Jew? How can he be the chosen seed when the original Jews was black? Which was nothing but a, but, but a part of the Egyptians that broke away from the raw government. And all these religions are nothing, these religions are nothing but a part of the same raw family that went all over the world and started teaching in other particular cultures. It started and, and rose up different cultures. And you're thinking it's different religions, it's all one religion, there's only one people on the earth. Homo, the word homo is the Latin word for the word Kim, and the word Kim is the word Cam, which means black. The word homo, which you get homo sapien sapien, which homo means race. It means man. It means black. So they're telling you that the person on this earth, homo, homo sapiens sapiens means black people. Because at one time it wasn't but one person on the earth, black people. And all the rest of it, we're the only planet that got this many races on the shit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and that's based on genetic mutation and different messed up stuff because this was nothing but a big old testing ground for the gods. You see what I'm saying? Since you was the God, you made experiments in Atlantis and Lemuria. Because this wasn't up with one big experimentation in a laboratory. You see what I'm saying? The Rosicrucians, the white Rosicrucians, say that the white man was an experiment that went bad and the UFOs is coming back to clean it up. That's what the white Rosicrucians say. Check. All right. It says, it says that the bee, the bee, what you see, a bee, is the zoo type of the black race. Is this white, this black race. Now it says that the human cycle of evolution in the timeline, this descent or the fall, it, it should be reminded that the function of the grail or the black dot is to contain the holy bloodline or the royal shangrio, the real true blood which is not human, which is, the tip, which is depicted in the myth in the connection of the royalty, which is the ancient word which is identified with divinity. They're saying that you are not human, you are gods. Human is what you came into, but hue means color. Hue, who man? Who man means God man. The Sphinx is called a God who. And the ancient Britons say we are named after the God who. Because remember, the people who built Stonehenge, because the people who lived around the world was all black. So who man means God man. Check. All right. The gate, the, the, okay now. It says, the, the grail has been depicted as the shadow. Or the shadow that suggests the shape of the mysteries or the vehicle association with the extraterrestrial visitation. Which the grail or the black dot cycle, or the, or, or the black dot cycle. The legend, the legend of the grail or the black dot fell to earth of the emerald form of the crown bearer of Lucifer, the light bringer. Lucifer means light bringer. It means light bringer. It ain't got nothing to do with no devil up under the ground. I'm going to explain that in a few minutes what it means by that. You are, and I'm going to show you a picture of what this thing is, is, is dealing with in a few minutes. Now, y'all all right? Okay, let's go on. The original god is named Soot. Soot means the black one. No other god exists in human history beyond this particular god, Soot, which means black. Our word Soot comes from, derives from the word Soot, all right? The black one, or, the, or, or, or what they call Soot Nessie, the black and golden one. The priest used to wear a black, you're going to see that priest, he had on a black and gold type of panther skin. The gold means the sun which the sun is inside of you. The black dot is also inside of you, which the black dot, once it is ignited, it, 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 you, you turn into the sons, uh, the sons and daughters of God. So black and gold is your color, which means soot Nessie, the black, the black and gold one. Now, what is going on? Let me explain what's going on, the reason why you can't get out of the mess that you are in. What happened was this. You, at one time, you were gods. You were lights of being. You, you were beings of light, excuse me. And as of a spearman and as your punishment because you rebelled against the... All you were was you was in heaven. You was a group of rowdy children that was given your own star system, Orion. 
As a result, you said that you got a little jealous of your parents. This is all in the stuff called the fall of heaven. You will see this fall story around the world. You got a little jealous of your parents of the star system serious. So you say you wanted to do your own thing. So you developed a giant computer and started controlling star systems with this computer. Now obviously you had that kind of stuff and you were more advanced than the cracker is now. So you, because this, is, this happened millions of years ago. And as a result, you started controlling star systems. Now there's a book out about this that the government banned. Brother Delbert Blair got a hold to the book and after he got a hold to the book, he read it one time and then the government banned the book. So as a result, I had to go and get spiritual channels to get the true story. And as a result, you, got it, you, you started controlling things and you got rowdy. And you got in a big war in heaven. You will see that in your Bible. You will see about the great war in heaven. And you got in a big war in heaven. And as a result, you got your behind spank. And as a result, the, old, the, 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 the Orion, part of those particular people started mutating. The other part, they say, we got to save the whole star system. So they took the planet Saturn and moved it down into this particular area. And the chakra centers of Saturn fell out and made the other planets. And the Earth being the, the, Earth being the final planet or the lowest planet. Now, to get a picture of the uh, Holy Kabbalah right quick. Everybody's seen. Now, those particular planets are lined up in the Holy Kabbalah. The different planets. The Earth is down here which is the lowest, which is the lowest. But it came out of, the, out, of, out of Saturn, the black planet. That's why the Dogon had to reunite Saturn as a result. As a result. Now, now this particular planet, he had to go through the most hell. And you being the black people and fail, you had to go through the most hell. But as a result, you have gone through your hell, and the other planets are waiting on you to lift them up. You see what I'm saying? Now, why is this? What is the meat on this? What is the food? What, what, what is the whole problem? Why, why did this have to happen? First of all, they said, listen, we had to produce, we had to do something that was never done in the history of the heavens. And that was this. They had to take a particular people, and those particular people, those particular people had to, okay, hold on. It's loud enough. You got a microphone on there, right? Okay, I got it snapped in. Those particular people had to produce, they had to do something that no other people in the universe did. And they had to totally forget themselves. Is that, that's on, that's on cool. They had to totally forget themselves, had to become cultural amnesia. There's nobody on the face of the earth has done what you have done. An ant knows what an ant is. A grain of dirt knows what a dirt is. Every animal knows what it is. The white man knows who he is. There's only one thing in the history of the universe that had cultural amnesia and forgot who it, who it was. The ultimate sin done to humanity and the ultimate crime in the universe was a people who forgot who they were. That's us. So therefore, they say you will rise up and receive the kingdom because you went lower than anybody else. So because you went so low, you can qualify to be at the head because you have done something that none of your other brothers and sisters up in heaven did. And that's totally forget yourself and become totally dead. Aren't you dead? Check. Now, so, as a result, you are now rising up. Now, as a result, the vibratory rate, when you came to this planet, you were gods. And at that particular time, you had what was called cosmic memory. And all you had to do is memor remember, because the simple fact that the actual pineal gland in you, you were actually was in communication with your brothers and sisters in the spiritual world. So what happened when you, when you die is, you thinking the people dead, no, you're the one that's dead, those people are now going to life. But in the old reincarnation system, they would have to hang around for a few, a few years, but even if they didn't get it right, they would have to come back and do it over again. This is like a big classroom. When you, when you die and you don't do it right down here, you got to come back again. But as a result, the new reincarnation cycle is now over. And your people is passed on that you think it's dead. They're on the other side waiting for you to get your stuff together. This is a big prison house and your body came into the physical function because the sun inside got encased into this particular body. So this body is nothing but a big prison house that limits you from doing your stuff when you used to be gods. You see what I'm saying? So as a result, you became into the lower vibra vibratory rate. Now, what is the deal with this thing? What you know as the physical does not exist. It's not real. This is in physics. What you know is the physical is low vibratory rate. It's called a hologram. 
This is in quantum physics now. This is a holographic universe. You thinking this is real because you born in this world and for some reason this is all you know, so you thinking it's real. If nobody, if, I'm saying if somebody told you that the spiritual world taught you that the spiritual world was real from the beginning, you would know that the spiritual world was real and in actuality this is all an illusion. You see what I'm saying? This is all an illusion. So what happened was after so many years of being gods in Atlantis, you fell into the illusion and your spiritual center shut down and then what happened was in the first time the spiritual world was clear and you communicated with all your brothers and sisters on the universe beat, the real universe. Okay. And the physical world was dim. As the, as the vibratory rate slowed down and you slowly started becoming more and more physical, the physical world became more clear and the spiritual world became dim and your third eye shut down. So you are asleep. And what you fell into is the sleep, which is all a hologram. It does not exist. You understand what I'm saying? This is a holographic universe. It's just that you are born in this and you think this is the real world. So when your people die, you crying for them. They have crossed over into the real world and they're crying for you because you're the one in hell. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So now what's getting ready to happen is, is the, the cycle is over and you're getting ready to go back into the spiritual world. You see what I'm saying? You're getting ready to go back into the spiritual world. Now here's a book. Now this is, now see, there's one thing to talk about the occult. There's another thing to talk about physics. Physics is what the white boy has concluded that he has ample evidence that he puts it in physics and science. This is called the holographic universe by Michael Talbert. Holographic universe. Now, the white boy concluded in 1983 that the black man was none other than God. In the Mind Brain Report, one of the guys by the name of Carl Pribram, who is a, who is a physicist, a PhD in physics, he proved based on the sciences that the black man, based on the melanin in you that links you back to the black holes in space. And he proved that you was God in the Mind Brain Report of 1983. In 1981, he came out with what is called the holographic universe, and he said that all this down here was a hologram. Was a hologram. So now... The same person, this is a book that we're talking about, this particular person called Pripram in here. And when you get the book, Beginner's Guide to the Book of Revelation, they're going to talk about the whole holographic universe. And when you go through the abyss, the real world comes into focus and the world that you call the real world disappears. Now, I gave a scenario and I wish I had a blackboard to try to understand this, but you just picture it in your mind. Let's say we take a blackboard. We put a whole bunch of stars on the blackboard. We leave a space out in the middle, and we draw the outline of a body, right? And, you, and you'll see the outline of a body, and these stars behind the outline. And you'll put a star in the middle of the forehead, right? And as a result, what will happen is this. Erase the line of the outline, and then what you got? You will have a, a blackboard full of stars. That's when you see the Lion King, they say, when the, that was the Lion King, it was a story of the Osirian drama that they made about you, and they had to put in animals to tell the white people about you. And they say, what? When you die, your people up there become the stars in heaven. Well, every man, every woman is a star, and the star is inside of you, which is the black dot. Now, take the same blackboard that has your star, and you erase the line, and you will be a star in heaven. Now, take the white man who don't have the star. Put him on the blackboard and put a line on it, then erase the line and what you got. He disappears. Because this is the hologram and they are only in the holographic universe. You understand how this goes? That's the key to this whole thing. Now, you know, we have been, once we got out of slavery, because we have lost the knowledge of self. And we got out of slavery and up to the last 140 years, we have been asking God to help us. You understand? But you know how you got a little child and the child is asking for things that to you, it really don't make no sense. But to him, it's a major thing because he don't know no better. Right? right. But when he grows up, he say, well, you know, you know. But you don't give it to him because you know better. Well, you've been asking God to, because the physical world is only a hologram in science. It's only a hologram. And the physical world is a hologram. And so the only thing you've been asking is for better conditions in the hologram. You don't want to become God. You only want your conditions to be better so you can be equal to the white man who inherited the hologram after you outgrew the hologram. 
You know, you did the physical thing for a couple of thousand years, but the cycle said, we got to take you down so you can prepare to come back to God. Okay. Not the physical thing. And they gave it to the white man. So when you came out of slavery, you have been begging to be on the equal of the white man. And God didn't bless you for the simple, he blessed some of you. But he didn't bless all of us with a simple fact. Your mission is to come back God and be head of the whole universe. You see, the white man, once the hologram, get, once the hologram disappears, he will disappear. Because he's a part of the hologram. You understand? Because the only thing in the universe that's real is the black, triple blackness of space and the suns. And in you is the sun in you that connects you with the triple blackness of space. And everything that you see physical is a hologram. Since the white man don't have a star, he's nothing but a hologram. So when the, when, when, when the suns ignite and when the triple blackness of space engulfs in the abyss and everything goes back to the original primal material, the white man disappears. And that's the key to this whole thing. You got to get it in your mind. Because anybody is thinking on the physical, political, mundane, and social, it ain't going to work. Now check this out. Rescue me if I'm wrong. We've been in revolution and liberation for the last 50 years. And everything we do in the physical has been a failure up to now. Right? right. That is because you have been wishing for the wrong thing. You are asleep. And you've been wanting the hologram, which is all an illusion. And that's what people do when you sleep. You dream in an illusion every world. Right. Check. Check. All right now. I want to get that clear because this is, this is how this thing is getting ready to go down. Now, let me get my papers and let's, let's go on. Now, the Enochian, the Enochian, this is a book called the Enochian Magic. Now, we're going to get in a way on how you're going to start working to save yourself in the remainder of this hologram. This is the Enochian Magic of John Dees, the most powerful system of magic in its original unexplicated form. It's by Jeffrey James. Jeffrey James, $14. In here is a, is, is a tale of a fall from heaven. And it also is names of angelic beings or deities. Now, what has happened is they have traced, they've taken these Enochian alphabets. Enoch is in the Bible. You see, the problem with the Bible is this. You get Jesus and you get a whole lot of names, but you don't have that many names for God. That's the mystery to the Bible. One of the names for God is Enoch. One of the names of God is Soot, which means the black one. And On, which means the dog, which means opener. Soot On in Samaria means Shait On, which later on, in a fight, it means Sait On. Now, I'm not talking about no Satan worshiper like you think some spooked out thing. You see what I'm saying? This. This is original when I'm going to get ready to get into this stuff. Because see, I, what happened was we got spiritual psychics from all over the country. And all of them said that this knowledge came down to them also. But they said that they were scared to talk about it to the people because the people have been stuck in religion so long. And religion is man-made until they won't be able to deal with it. And I held on to this particular information for a whole year. And, and I started and I've been lecturing for three years and I said now is the time to bring this out. Take it or leave it. Now, Enoch is another form of that particular God in heaven. His later form is Tahuti, which is all a form of the same God that you know of in Egypt. Now, Enoch has some angelic deities. These deities in here, they have an angelic alphabet, and they have traced this angelic alphabet around the world trying to find out where did it come from? And they found out that the only thing that these so-called angels in here, that this language is supposed to have been spoken on earth one time, the only, way they can, only thing they can find close to it is the African languages. So that means they're talking about you. Now when the white boys put these angelic alphabets and start dealing with this particular stuff, they start, the, the angels come and give them stab wounds, cut their neck open, kill them. They even put them on fire. There's the stuff called people who burst in, who etern people who eternally combust. School press out of England put the book out. School esoteric press. And so they, 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 the white people have been unsuccessful with dealing with these particular gods. The only one that could deal with them was Alistair Crawley, because Alistair Crawley was one of the ancient black Druids also, and he was black too. So therefore, because he had the melanin, he could deal with it. Now, 
The Enochian alphabets and the Enochian deities is nothing but your higher self. You see, you got two levels. You got the lower self and you got the higher self. Your higher selves is in, rec recorded in the angelic deities. In Egypt, you got the god Ptah, which is also the god Ra, or the god Osiris. And the god Ptah has 72 deities, the so-called in Christianity, there are 72 archangels. And those 72 archangels come from Ptah, and Ptah is a pygmy god, which means black. So that means all the angels in heaven are black. See what I'm saying? Are black. Now, in a book called the Kabbalah of the Golden Dawn, you're going to get all 72 deities the, uh, the 72 names in heaven. In here you're going to get the, an the Enochian deities. These are nothing but angelic forces that you used to be. They used to be you. Now I'm explaining how you get separated from them in a few minutes. Now, let's deal with some things. You come from a part called a chaos sphere. Chaos, which means the black, triple blackness of space. Now, the white boy who is a, who is a physics PhD by the name of... Um, uh, Hawkins, um, Stephen Hawkins, wrote a book, The Brief History of Time, and in 1992, they put out a movie, The Brief History of Time. Now, in the movie, he studied the black holes, and he said that the black holes in space, once the earth goes to the black holes in space, it breaks it up, and it becomes particles of light. And those particular, so what's happening with this earth is going through the black holes in space, Right? And once it breaks it up, it becomes particles of light. You see what I'm saying? It becomes particles of light. So that means when this earth goes to the black hole, it breaks up this hologram, which is the physical. Now he went to, he went to the Vatican in Rome. And when he went to the Vatican in Rome, the Pope told him, you are right. He said, because we got the same stuff in the bottom of the Vatican in Rome. You see what I'm saying? He said, you got the same stuff in the bottom, bottom of the battle coming wrong. And he said, you are right. He said, but you can't tell the people this stuff, because if you tell the people this stuff, what will happen is, you will mess us up. He said, we can't control the world if you tell the people this stuff. It's in the movie, The Brief History of Time. So you need to go get, uh, 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 either, you need to go get the movie. It might be at Blockbuster. You see what I'm saying? Damn, now. Huh? 1995. Now, what I need to do, um, I know this is awkward, but I've been drinking this water all day, and I need to go to the restroom. <laughs> I need to go to the restroom. So now we're going to take a little break, okay? Y'all all right? We'll take a little break. Now, I need to take a break, because they got me on water. So y'all take a little quick break, and we come back. Now. Okay. We're going to deal with some things, let's see. Deal with some stuff in science, in the holographic universe. Okay. What do you think and when, and when you were, and when you were, cha when you were chaos? Does chaos, a, st a state of things in which change is supreme. Chaos, it is a state of primal matter before creation. Chaos, a confused state of mass. Chaos was the primal source of all. Chaos, it is not anarchy, it's chaos. In the beginning, there was only chaos. The, eight, the agents of chaos that is casting burning glances at everything and in anyone are capable of bearing witness to their condition. One, of, one must have chaos in order to give birth to a dancing star. Matter is an illusion. Solid, solidity is an illusion. All are illusion, only chaos is real. The black dot is known as chaos. Everything else is an illusion. Only chaos is real. Because the black dot comes from the triple blackness of space and it is a chaos. Now, we're going to get into to the Necronomicon. One of the words, Sut, Awas, Enoch, in one of the Sumerian terms is called Shuthulu. You want to get a book called Shuthulu Myths. Myths in the Kingdom um, and the Kingdom of Horrors by Robert E. Howard, creator of, Kano, of, of Conan. 
Chthulhu, C-T-H-U-L-H-U. Now, these gods I'm getting ready to give you are the most powerful gods on the planet. Chthulhu. This is the guy Robert E. Carr, Robert E. Howard, edited by David Drake. Now, Robert, Robert David Drake, in his, in, when he edited the book, he says, Robert E. Howard has a personal misfortune to spend most of his life, life in place where black hatred was ruled everywhere. Now, this is a white man he's talking about who wrote this book, Chthulhu, which he wrote the book after H.P. Lovecraft, a horror novelist, died. And he was dealing with Chthulhu. Now, why would he say that, why would, he, why would the person who edited this book would say about racism? What does that got to do with anything? Not unless he know that Chthulhu is a form of the black gods that's getting ready to come down. So this is a little four dollar thing on Chthulhu. It's a horror novel, but when you get into stuff about, about when they talk about the great old ones, Shub, Yog Satos, Shub Nigara, near the hotel, are the monsters that, and, and, and whose ultimate throne is chaos. The creator is called Shuthulu. Only the ancient blasphemous manuscript can that name be found. The great old ones were once who were, who are, and who shall remain, and long after they have divorced us and devoured us. Now that means they're talking about white people. The great old ones are you. You are the great old ones. Now, that comes to the thing called the Necronomicon. But let me deal with some things. The Moors put in Europe a text called the Necronomicon. They found this text in Moorish Spain in 1977. In the book, Robert Anton Wilson's book, The Mass of the Illuminati, which is a novel because he wrote the book when it was not feasible to write this stuff straight out. In here, he documents, when they say Arabs in Spain, they mean the black Moors. When they set up the university, when they set up the 16 universities in Spain, is where they left this particular text. Now, let me explain what this Necronomicon is. Let me get my notes. We're going to deal with some Necronomicon. Okay. Y'all ready for this? The Necronomicon, a, 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 I told you at one time you fell. And when you fell, your higher selves got separated from you. That's the Necronomicon. So the Necronomicon, you are the Necronomicon. A primal power that created the universe is called the Great Old Ones. They are the forgotten and locked out of alternative time zones because the vessels that they manifest are asleep, known as black people. But they are going to use the black people as zombies and begin to manifest and take, you, take over again because they're going to come right through you, your black dots, the housing product of where they get ready to come through. Now, the Dagon is a group of black people who were some people from Atlantis who worship, worship Awas. The Dagons are the original ancestors of the Dogons. When Atlantis went down, some of them shapeshifted in and met into mermaids and later into dolphins and whales. That's why the dolphins and whales got the same intelligence you have. And that's why they are beaching themselves now to sacrifice. So sac some of them are sacrificing themselves so they can reincarnate or so they can go to the other side and become these godheads outside of the dolphins' bodies. So the dolphins and all that stuff is nothing but your souls. You can go from a human to a dolphin to a whale. This is real stuff. Marine biologists talk about this all the time. All you got to do is just study. You see what I'm saying? They got their own languages and everything. They are, they are highly intelligent. Probably more intelligent than we are, especially us being lost now. <laughs> now, <laughs> the deep ones are forms of the great old ones, more particularly associated with the element of water or the astral plane. White people are admitting that the black brothers from Sirius are the great old ones. Now, the Necronomicons are the great old ones, are invaders from other dimensions and other worlds. They once ruled the earth and was vanquished and expelled by other cosmic forces other than the, you actually, the, 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 the great white brotherhood, what they did was is they put you through this big sleep. They, they slowed down the, the, uh, the, the, the actual uh, vibratory rate. Your higher selves were separated from you. That's the great old ones. 
In some cases, they were merely in prison. You were in prison into this physical body. You understand what I'm saying? Like Chithulu, the sunken city of Rayleigh, the underworld. There's a particular underworld. Remember I told you that the white boys say that the other planets, they got life, they don't have life on it, but they got life in it. The underworld here, the subterranean world, got life in it too. Now, this is the key, because you're going to find out what this whole inhabitants of the underworld is. It says, our black souls, our higher selves, were in the twat, the underworld, now unleashed and ready to contact us in some of this particular, that was a gateway. Now what happened was, is this here, after the vibratory rate slowed down, <coughs> your higher selves, when you were gods, they went to the underworld. They left your physical bodies on top of the ground to live out this karma. They live out this karma, and your higher selves been sleep. Now since 1212 this gateway is opened up, now your higher selves are ready to join you again and you're ready to come back to God's. The sunken city of Rayleigh or the subterranean world beneath the deserts and the polar ice caps, and, uh, and polar ice caps. but their legends survive as, as their telepic influence and still worship by certain primal people in Africa as well as certain sophisticated occult groups dedicated to bringing back their reign. Black people exist on two planes, your lower self on top of the ground and your higher self under the ground in the subterranean world. So the complete ha inhabitants of the subterranean world was your higher selves. When you look in the book of the, book of the dead or either you get from fetish to God, you're going to see a whole section on the underworld. That's when the revelation comes and the earth goes through this abyss. The underworld, the earth, the earth literally flips inside out and your higher selves rejoin you. They are here now lurking ready to take over the world and take back the people. So, you, uh, uh, so the higher selves are the subterranean world. You see what I'm saying? And you've heard this, Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about the, 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 the uh, subterranean world. Now, when the stars are right, now the great old ones will plunge from other worlds through the sky and rise again from the depths of, the, from the depths of sleep. You have been asleep. But you're, and you're, you're, the people under the underworld have been asleep since Atlanta, and they're getting ready to rise up and go back in you. You see, you got a housing product. Your black dot is the gate where God comes through, your higher self comes through. But there's a demon that sits on that particular gate that you call the devil. It's actually the black dot, it's the melon, and it's the black hole. And your lower self, it loves it here, it wants to, it wants to stay around. It's been here for 20, 30, 40 years, and it wants to stay around. That's your lower ego. But when you raise up to the spiritual tree of life, there's that particular gateway, the abyss, the black hole, it eats the lower self up and your higher self comes in. So that's the demon that you see. Now white people, that's the devil to the white people for the simple fact that because they don't have no higher selves, once that demon eats them up, they through. You see what I'm saying? They are through. Now, it says that the Wizard of Oz was taken from H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu myths, or the underground. And, you know, um, Dorothy went 